size from the from the D one to, to there. Is, is it there. No. <laughs> let, let him play with you. Thirty seconds. It's hard to turn it on. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Item two, roll call. Nelson? Here. Orison? Larson? Here. Wunschel? Here. Hansen? Here. Reet? Here. Moriarty? Here. Thank you. Uh, one housekeeping item on the agenda before we proceed into the consent agenda. Uh, you will find, as normally is a custom on the first meeting of the month, the department head reports. Due to the length of this meeting and the number of agenda items, we have moved those reports to the next council meeting, which will be the third Monday. So you'll see them on the agenda, but we will not actually receive those reports tonight. So with that, item three is the consent agenda. 3A is a motion to approve city council minutes of August 16, 2021 from the special meeting, uh, August 31st, 2021. Roll call resolution authorizing permanent transfer of funds of budgeted transfers for the month ending August 31, 2021. C is a resolution authorizing and directing the temporary closing of portions of the city alley in the city of Spencer as requested by the Iowa Brewing Company. It should be the Iowa Project, sorry about that, Brewing Company on September 11th and September 18th for a special event. D, licenses approved temporary outdoor service permits to cover September 11, 2021 and September 18, 2021 for the Iowa Project subject, uh, subjection, should be subject, subject, excuse me. Yep, subject to final <laughs> approval by the Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division. E is a motion to approve sidewalk construction and assessment agreements with Joe and Don DeBoer, uh, two, uh, 214 West 1st Street, easy for me to say, and Heather Harrington at 210 West 1st Street. A uh, resolution to provide for a notice of hearing on proposed plans and specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the 2021 West Leach Park boat ramp project with a letting date of September 30, 2021, and a hearing date of 10-4-2021. That was item F. G is a uh, motion to approve change order for uh, change order number one for the 2019 manhole rehabilitation project to reflect as-built quantities. H is a motion to approve change order number one for the 2021 crack and joint ceiling project to reflect as built quantities. I is a motion to approve change order number one for the 2021 PCC paving project to reflect as built in quantities. J is a resolution proposing the vacation and transfer of jurisdiction of the following described portions of city streets East 11th Street from Grand Avenue to 2nd Avenue East and 1st Avenue East from East 10th Street to East 11th Street with jurisdiction of the vacated streets to be transferred to the Spencer Municipal Hospital as recommended by Long-Term Planning Committee. And just to be clear, tonight um, is just setting the hearing for the next council meeting. So the public hearing will receive written and verbal comments in favor or against. K is a motion to approve a quote from Great Plains Structures for $64,100 for the resealing and scheduled maintenance on the biosolids storage tank at the wastewater treatment plant. This is a CIP planned item. L is a motion to approve quote from Murphy Tractor and Equipment Company for $18,850 to purchase rebuilt solid waste wheel loader engine. And that concludes the consent agenda. First by Tom, second by Lauren, I believe. Was it Lauren? Yes, it was. Yeah, second by Lauren. Discussion question on these items? Mayor, yep. I, on, your, on your desk, there's a, the transfer resolution. Um, Two-thirds of the way down for the road use tax. Drop the first seven. It was, it was only a $97,000 transfer, not a $797,000. Um, George pointed out that my typo earlier today, so... 
um, just so you guys are aware. It's about six or seven from the bottom on the first page. Thank you, Brian. Any other discussion or questions? Ron, did you have something? No, no. no. Okay. Anyone? <clears throat> Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Wunchell I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Item 4A is a ordinance amending Title IX, Chapter 16 of the Spencer City Code concerning floodplain management as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is the second filing. Alec described the uh, intention and purpose of this at the last council meeting. I'll make a motion on that, Mayor. First by Ron. Second. Second by Donovan. Discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Wenchel I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item five, we have a number of public hearings tonight. Um, some of them cover some pretty comprehensive topics, and so I think it'll be good to review um, those plans and uh, the topics covered under those plans as we go through the public hearings. 5A is a public hearing on the proposed amendment to the Spencer Urban Revitalization Plan. I declare the public hearing open. Have we received any written comments against? We have none. Do we have any oral comments against? I see none. Do we have any written comments in favor of? We have none. Do we have any oral comments in favor of? I declare the public hearing closed. Item 5A1 is a resolution adopting a restated plan for the Spencer Urban Revitalization Area. I'll make a motion on that. First by Ron. Second. Second by Lauren. Brian, do you want to talk a little bit about what this is and uh, how it impacts the community? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so. This plan is a, a restatement, so we have passed, adopted our initial revitalization plan about 10 years ago. What that plan provided for was um, housing tax abatement. Um, so that was the plan. Under that plan on single family, well, we applied it to single family housing, but it's meant for any, any property that's either zoned residential or classified by the assessor as residential can apply for a tax abatement. <clears throat> Um, which grants on the first $75,000 of improvement, or if it's a brand new home, the first $75,000, we abate that value for the first five years, and then it goes back to its full taxing value. So under this plan amendment, what we're doing is two thing, or three things. One, um, we're taking a, the amendments that we made to our original plan. So original plan was single family housing, the intent, then we added multifamily residential to the plan it's taking those amendments getting rid of the amendments kind of combining them into a plan um, it's eliminating the sunset clause so the original plan sunsetted after 10 years um, this plan doesn't have a sunset until the council at any given time either wants to get rid of it or make changes to it so benefit of that is um, if it wasn't for our new planning director looking through documents trying to get caught up to speed we probably would have not caught that it had a sunset because none of our other plans like this actually have a sunset clause in them. And then the third item it does is, and we talked at the Economic Development Committee, is we're adding commercial tax abatement. So it's for those um, commercial projects. Um, if they increase the value of their commercial property a minimum of 15%, then it would be a 300 or a three year 100% abatement on their improved value. So if it's a remodel, they have to improve it 15% on the increased value. They'll receive a tax abatement for three years at 100% brand new. It does that. Um, and then I think we discussed that back at Economic Development back in May um, when we had that committee meeting. So that's what this um, plans would do. The territory is within the corporate limits of the city of Spencer. So it's all property that has properly zoned or classified residential commercial for their respective abatements. Well, Brian, thanks for the information. I, di I didn't realize that sunset, but 
um, I was on the council when this happened and I was very happy because at the time we were looking at um, giving abatement to, to new housing and I felt strongly at the time that we should do something for for existing homes and stuff and that was why this this all came about you know I said let's do something to have people better their houses and I you know it's still out there and I think it's for an economic development to people to upgrade their houses and stuff it gives them an incentivize to to get that tax abatement so you know I, it's worked I mean we've done several houses on it and it seems to really have improved some houses so I'm glad to see that we're going back to extending it thank you Ron any other questions or comments on 5a1 all right hearing none vote by machine please Nelson I, Larson I, Wunschel I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. 5A2 is a uh, ordinance amending ordinance. It'd be resolution amending the ordinance, right? No, it's actually an ordinance. Ordinance amending, amending the, the ordinance. ordinance. An yeah. ordinance amending the ordinance. <laughs> Number 736 uh, uh, designating an area of Spencer, Iowa as the Spencer Urban Revitalization Area. This is the first filing of three. First by Ron, or first by George, sorry. Second. Second by Donovan. Discussion or question on this? Essentially, the what we're doing is we're adding any annexed territory that was annexed since last time we set up the district. Even though we say it's the city limits of Spencer, they're given a date as so in the new plan, it's going to be the city limits as of, I can't remember, August 21st or whatever. There's a date that those city limits are set so any annexed land after that would have to be amended into it if we decide to apply this abatement to those areas so um, that's essentially what we're amending the ordinance for thank you brian any other discussion or questions hearing none vote by machine please Nelson I, Larson I, Wunschel I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. <clears throat> Thank you. Item 5B is a public hearing on proposed amendment to the Spencer Consolidated Urban Renewal Areas. I declare the public hearing open. Have we received any written comments against? We have none. Do we have any oral comments against? I see none. Do we have any written comments in favor of? We have none. Do we have any oral comments in favor of? I see none. I declare the public hearing closed. Item 5B1 is a resolution to approve urban renewal plan amendment for the Spencer Consolidated Urban Renewal Areas. First by Tracy. Second by Tom. Any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Winchell I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 5C is a public hearing on the proposed development agreement with Shoneman Brothers Company. I declare the public hearing open. Do we have any written comments against? We have none. Do we have any oral comments against? I see none. Do we have any written comments in favor of? We have none. Do we have any oral comments in favor of? I see none. I declare the public hearing closed. Item 5C1 is a resolution approving development agreement with Shoneman Brothers Company authorizing annual appropriation of tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. I'll make a motion on that, Mayor. First by Ron, second, second. by Tom. Sorry, George, Tom, Tom got you there. So we have a first, we have a second. Any discussion, questions on this item? Yeah. No, just happy that they chose Spencer to expand their business and glad to have them in the community. Thank you, Ron. Anyone else? All right. Vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Wunschel I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 5D is a public hearing on proposed development agreement with New Tech Development. 
I declare the public hearing open. Are there any written comments against? We have none. Are there any oral comments against? I see none. Do you have any written comments in favor of? We have none. Do you have any oral comments in favor of? I see none. I declare the public hearing closed. Item 5D1 is a resolution approving development agreement with New Tech Incorporated authorizing annual appropriation tax increment payments and pledging certain tax increment revenues to the payment of the agreement. I'll make a motion on that, Mayor. First by Ron. Second. Second by Tracy. Discussion or questions on this? Just echo what I said before. Happy to have them in the community. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. It's, hey, nice, it's Don nice to see uh, new structures and new development going out that direction. It really right. makes Spencer look a lot larger, too. So mm -hmm. really nice to see. And for clarification, maybe for the, for the audience and those uh, viewing at home, this project is on the north end of town in the North Y area um, involving a, a business moving from where they currently are over to that location. So, Any other comment? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Wenchel I, Hanson I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 5E e is a public hearing on West 4th Street and 32nd Avenue West Storm Sewer Improvement Project. I declare the public hearing open. Do we have any written comments against? We have none. Do we have any oral comments against? I see none. Do we have any written comments in favor of? We have none. Do we have any oral comments in favor of? I see none. Declare the public hearing closed. 5E1 is a resolution approving plans and specs for the 2021 West 4th Street and 32nd Avenue West Storm Sewer Improvement Project. Bids will be received on 9 16 2021. So moved. First by Lauren. Second. Second by George. Discussion, question, comments on this? Seeing and hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson I, Larson I, Winchell I, Hanson I, Reet I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item six, new business. 6A is a motion to approve letter of support for the Spencer Main Street's application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority for a Main Street Challenge grant to renovate the two-story apartment above Hanson's clothing. First by Tom. Second. Second by Donovan. Uh, Nancy, do you want to maybe just explain a little bit uh, about the challenge grant program and the growth potential for this project? From Spencer Main Street. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. So this is a, a challenge grant that is offered to any of the Main Street communities in Iowa. There are 55. Uh, we are going for it. Um, the maximum award amount will be $100,000, which is more than it used to be, with a minimum award of no less than $25,000. It's a one-to-one -one match, uh, and in-kind contributions are permitted for no more than 35% of the project. It basically involves if you were to take a building and shake it up and then pour it out, those are the things that count. So uh, they want to do a, a restoration, a remodel of the Hansons, uh, above Hansons clothing. It's a two-story apartment. It's the only one in downtown Spencer. And um, IGL group, Ernani, is doing the application with us. Um, and they're going to renovate that two-story apartment. So we're hoping the deadline is on Thursday. So thank you for approving that. Basically, the state just wants to know that you all are aware of what the plan is. Because if it was something that you, the city would not approve of, then we wouldn't go forward with this, but since you all know about it. So the details are, aren't really ironed out yet. So this isn't like codes and that, all that business. So that will come later. Nancy? Yes? So what do you, you mean by it's the only two-story apartment on, on in downtown Spencer? It's the only two-story, and like it's a two-story apartment. Two above the store. Oh, okay. It's, right. Yeah. It's really okay. Yeah. So, yeah right. There's third third floor living right. capability. Right. Capability. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Besides the hotel, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I move the letter of support. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, George. We I believe we have a first and second currently. Is there any other discussion or questions? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. 
Item 6B is a motion to approve agreement for professional services for design of Grand Avenue corridor signal equipment upgrades and ICAP grant requirements with Bolton and Mink. I believe these, this was uh, discussed at the Public uh, Works Committee meeting previously. Correct, and I'll make a motion. First by Ron. Second. Second by Lauren. Any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Item 6C is a motion to approve agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation for an Iowa's Clean Air Attainment Program Federal Aid Swap Project for the Downtown Traffic Light System Upgrade Project. First by Tracy. Second. Second by Donovan. Discussion, questions? Yeah, who would we talk about what that, what that entails? Would, Mark? Would Mark be kind of the, yep. it's kind of a <laughs> interesting thing, right, Mark? It is a little complicated. It's based on making improvement on Iowa air quality due to an improved timing system with the, trap, with the downtown right. traffic lights. So basically you'd need to quantify uh, if we improve the efficiency of the system with less idle time and traffic moves through faster, then in turn you should have less emissions. So it's an 80% grant. Uh, the estimate of the project is 274 and puts it around that 219 range uh, eligible for the grant funding. Thanks, Mark. You bet. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions or comments related to this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 6D is a motion to approve professional services contract with Cruz Kate and Nelson PC for the 2023 East Side Reconstruction and Sewer Separation Project. This has been recommended by the Public Works Committee. I move to approve the contract. First by George. Second. Second by Tom. Discussion or question on this? Well, it looks like we got an expert out there. He can explain what, where this section is that we're going for. Ross, you want to touch on that impacted area? Uh, yeah, you bet. Good evening, everyone. Um, the impacted area would be uh, 6th Avenue East from East 3rd Street uh, up to the railroad tracks. It would also include uh, East 4th Street from 5th Avenue East to 10th Avenue East for paving. Any questions? Nope. And I should, I should include the, the, most of the storm sewer separation is on 6th Avenue East, um, and then it's mostly street paving um, and maybe some sewer repairs on East, 10th, or East 4th Street. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. 6E is a motion to approve professional services contract with Cruz Kate and Nelson PC for the 2021 drainage district number 47 outlet project. Make that motion. First by Donovan. <clears throat> Second by Lauren. Discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 6F, a review and approval for a quote for the rocket slide construction project. Quotes uh, were received on September 7th, 2021 at 3.30 p.m. First by Tom. Second. Second by George. Jared, would you want the floor here for a little bit? So we, we <clears throat> received one quote um, from MLS Landscape. Um, engineer's estimate was um, 19.5. Um, the quote we got was 35,452, so which is well above. Um, Estimated, so at this time we recommend we reject uh, this particular quote. Um, we think we only received one quote due to the timeline. Um, some contractors may not be able to get that project completed by the November 1 date that we had specified. Um, and so we need to, to reevaluate if we need to extend that deadline um, or how we want to handle that. So um, that's kind of where we're at on, on this project so far. So you recommend that we table it and push it back, or what are you? Uh, yeah, I recommend that we reject this particular
quote. Um, I think what we'll have to do is um, put rebid, um, put it back out there, try to get uh, push the timeline back a little bit um, to give those contractors a little bit more time, hopefully get more interested uh, contractors and uh, get a better cost for that project. Okay, thanks, Jerry. This is separate from the renovation of the rock itself, right? This is what it's hanging around? Yep, this is the site, the footings that the rocket's going to sit on, sidewalks to that particular area. What was the original estimate on that? Or didn't they have What's that? 18. Yeah, 19. You want to, you want to re restate those numbers, Jared? So the estimate for the site work on this was 19500 um, The bid came in at 35452 And we only received one bid, correct? Well, yep, we received one bid. So. All right, so just so we're clear where we're at here, so, um, and I think I'm going to move this to a uh, roll call vote because we're dealing with a contract here. So we've received uh, a bid that's well over the engineer's estimate. The recommendation from staff is to reject that bid, which would mean a no vote. A uh, yes vote would mean we're accepting that bid, just so everyone's clear ahead of the vote. And so uh, are there any other questions or discussion related to this? Jared, what kind of... Um yardage and stuff of concrete and stuff so just kind of have a rough idea I it, it was about uh, 1450 square foot of sidewalk um, we actually had uh, seven cubic yards of concrete donated um, and they have uh, just on here uh, one concrete foundation so footing who did the engineers estimate on that uh, Jim with Cruz Kate Nelson. Okay, Ross, do do you know anything on this one, or probably not? Or what would be your rec since you're with Cruz Kate Nelson? Would that be your recommendation, or are you seeing other things out there that costs and stuff that maybe it is in line? I think what we're seeing here is a pretty unique project, pretty small, unique project. Um, we don't have a lot of concrete contractors working in town right now. Um, the completion date is pretty specific. Um, yet this fall, you know, we're already into September. Um, and I know the majority of the local guys are full through the year. So okay. so um, it might be better off the spring let or something? Yeah, I think that's our recommendation. <clears throat> we need to open up the time frame for the project and uh, re-let it. So. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I talked to Jim this afternoon on the <clears throat> number of contractors we had contacted, and he said, like, one of them, Diamond Concrete, had turned it down even though they because they have don't have time but they'll be in spring to do a parking lot for us and you know they would have been interested had they been in town so i think like ross said that's what we're hearing from the contractors is there's just we're running out of days yeah. and with no other big concrete projects in town to add something of this scale to one of those you know if they're already in town it just wasn't feasible with this timeline this fall Any other further questions or comments? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Nelson nay, Larson nay, Wunschel nay, Hansen nay, Reet nay, Moriarty nay. Thank you. So this has been a project I've been pushing, so I'll, I'm going to push some more. Um, you know, we have we have donors, um, we have community members who are excited. I realize there's a, a small difference between fall and spring, you know, but if at all possible, if we could find some contractors who might be interested to bid again if we if we let it out and it could come closer, you know, if we have to work with the terms or whether depending or, you know, however it is. It, if there is a way because the material is already preserved, um, it's ready, I believe, to be assembled, correct? We have all the pieces and... Or at least by the time it would be ready to be poured, yep, we could get it erected. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one one more <laughs> across the plate and just encourage everyone, if we can, to try to get this thing up before the snow flies. And if we can't, we can't, you know. But um, I'd hate to see it end on on just one bid because everybody's full. So Mayor, I'd put a challenge out there to get your rubber boots out and maybe. Hey, you, in. you tell me the day and time, and I'll be there to help. There you it. go. <laughs> I, have, I have zero problem with that. There so. you go. 
All right. Thanks, Jared. Item G is a motion to approve quote from EcoTurf Surfacing for 10,952 for the rocket slide. First by Tom. Oop, Don. I think at this time. Okay. Yeah. So this the safety surfacing underneath is dependent on the site preparation and construction. Mm -hmm. So um, we recommend just to remove this item. Uh, from the agenda and not act on it um, and we'll go back and, and and I'll work with um, the companies we got quotes from to see if they would honor that quote and maybe we can bring that that forward at, at future meetings but to work with them on um, estimates for spring uh, completion date if we decide to, to move forward with that spring completion so at this point you don't know if that Price will be good in the spring. Correct. <clears throat> and so it's all dependent on the, the site being prepped and ready because that'll be the last thing that goes in. So I assume um, it's a hot pour or a liquid so the, pour. The, yeah, it's a liquid pour uh, mm -hmm. rubber surfacing. We have to have um, four and a half inches of compacted sub base before we, we have that. And we have to have everything kind of prepped and ready to go. And they just install it after everything's but this, all up. This bid has a sunset date on it? Yeah, right now date. with right now with their um, current materials, they're they're hard to get. Shortage supplies. Their quotes are good for 15 days. Wow. So, 15. Yep. Yeah. Wow. We do. I'm still uh, I'm still working through it in my head. Okay. George has a first to table item 6G. I'll do a second on that. Second by Ron. Any discussion or questions? And just the understanding that Jared will go back to him and, and talk to him and yep. try to try to get some. Ex yep. I know the it's material is dependent, and so it's going to be hard for them to guarantee anything. But yeah, and it may you know it may have been tougher on them to get to this this fall too as well. But um, okay. you know if they're willing to have us sign a a, a quote. You know, maybe they'll honor that price, but I got to talk to them a little bit more about right about right. that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I I hate to I hate to risk throwing this out, and all of a sudden it comes back at fourteen or sixteen. Yeah, because of materials, so we but can't. That, but you can't store I mean, it. It's it's dependent yeah. upon them. And no, I'm just saying that if we can say, okay, we'll we'll go ahead and pay this, but get the work done later. To just to, to preserve the money to, to be a bid? Yeah, to Tom's point, Jared, so so the quote's good for 15 days. <clears throat> Correct. How long is the delivery good for after the quote? Do you know? No, I don't know at this time. I'll have to check. So, again, to Tom's point, um, maybe call them and see, so would they honor this? Would they lock this price in if we paid a portion of right. this towards, even if they don't pour it in the fall, can we lock it in? Pay a portion, you know, and do do it in this because it's the same fiscal year, right, Brian? So let's say we pour it in <clears throat> in April or March. Right, May. we don't prepay for products or goods. Yeah. Well, well, we did software, right? No, we software we've made progress payments, but we don't put a down payment on products. Okay. So for eco turfs, but uh, quotes if, valid for. 30 days, all project, depending on whether installation dates are tentative, 100% payment uh, due within 15 days of completion. Additional insurance supplied at no charge. Customer responsible for cost and any additional changes to insurance. So, so just That's so I'm clear, in the, in the bid world, so we had planned on a fall pour more than 15 days after we approved this, just so I'm clear on their terms, they would honor that price within like a 90 day window, 60 day window? They don't specify that here, I'll have to okay. get back to you on that. All right. Sounds good. We have a first, we have a second to table this as well. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for your hard work. We'll get it up. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just taking a little I bit. I don't like to miss deadlines. 
6H is a motion to approve sidewalk cafe refunds uh, in the amount of $1,500 each to El Tapatio, Godfathers, and Wheezies as recommended by the Finance Committee. First by Lauren. Second. Second by Tom. Discussion questions on this? I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm glad to see the refunds going out to them. I thank the Finance Committee for that. Sorry. I'm glad to see those refunds going out, um, but uh, it's disappointing to see that the project has hit such a roadblock. Thank you, Tom. Anyone else? All right, hearing nothing. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Item 6I is a motion to approve change order number 2 to the wastewater treatment plant improvement project phase for control building drain line replacement and additional brick masonry for color blending uh, at control building for a total increase of $12,879.39 to be paid through the contingency allowance. Make a motion on that, Mayor. First by Ron. Second. Second by George. Discussion, questions on this? Uh, Brian or, or Mark, do we want to touch just quickly for the press and the people at home uh, what the term contingency allowance means as it relates to the original bid? So within the bid project itself, um, the contractor or the engineers put in a, a, a set amount uh, for conting contingency, so if we've already so if the total contract is $3 million, I think there's 180000 give or take, of contingency to cover unknowns such as this. So it's not going to, at this point, change the contract price. Um, we'll just buy down that 180. So if at the end of the project, if this is the only thing that hits the contingency, we would have a, oops, didn't realize that wasn't on. Um, we would have a change order to d reduce the overall contract price by whatever's left in the contingency. So. So real quick, sorry for the, for the people at home and watching. So the, the quick definition of the contingency allowance as it relates to the original bid? Yeah, it's just a built-in um, amount to cover unknown things without having to increase the contract amount. So um, at the end, if it's not used, we'll reduce the contract amount, but it was part of the bid package. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 7, as we stated at the beginning of the meeting, department head reports are being moved to the next council meeting, the third Monday in September. Item 8 is the engineer's report. Ross? Uh, good evening again. Uh, quick project update. Um, out at the airport on the 2021 runway 1230 rehab project, uh, Farner Asphalt Sealers continues to work on sealing joints and repairing edge spalls. Um, they, had a, they had a slow week last week because of the weather. Um, they're hoping to get quite a bit done this week yet and probably try and wrap up next week. Uh, there is a, a closure planned uh, for the whole airport on August 9th from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And hopefully that'll be the last closure. So. Um, on the sewer uh, structure rehab project, Sorry, Don, did, you, did you say August 9th? I may have, because that's what it says on my sheet. But <laughs> it's September 9th. Okay. So, yeah, sorry about See, that. See, I'm listening to you. Yeah, you are. That's good. Just just making sure, making sure you guys aren't sleeping. So, um, On the sewer structure rehab job, uh, HydroClean worked on the West 4th Street lift station uh, last week. Um, they completed the rehab of the interior, uh, which included a cementuous lining of the the entire structure and also replaced a bunch of piping. Um, so, the, so the interior of that is rehabbed. Um, they will continue to work on uh, the exterior of a couple structures towards the end of the month. Um, that project went well and it was uh, assisted by the uh, um, wastewater department and also the street department to bypass uh, the lift station out there last week. And then the last thing is the uh, 4th Street HMA overlay project. We still, we still think that uh, Blacktop Services and their subs will start the week after the fair. 
I think what you'll see first is concrete work, which will include sidewalk repair, uh, curb and gutter repair, and some street patching. Um, that'll probably be the first week after the fair, and then the following week, I think you'll see some um, milling equipment and probably start the overlay. So that the late start date on that project was August 30th, um, so the countdown is, has started for working days, um, getting that project through the DOT. So they have 35 working days to complete the job. Hey, Ross. On that, on that, when they start milling on that, where they, where you guys put in the new concrete, from like Sixth Avenue and, and then around a third, yep, right on Fourth Street there, um, they still mill even the top of that to bring um, it, or will they stop and leave that concrete since it's new and stop and start? So there'll be a couple sections in there, just like you said, on Fourth Street. Um, between 4th and 6th uh, Avenue there, there's quite a bit of good concrete, exposed concrete. And then again, on the last year's project um, from the 1st Avenue to 2nd Avenue, um, all that new concrete will stay exposed. Um, so we'll just mill up to the edge of it and then match that edge. Um, so yeah, we, we won't cover up anything that's brand new unless it's a real short section, so. Any other questions? Thank you, Tom. Any other questions, comments regarding Ross? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ross. Welcome to September, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Item nine, city manager or interim city manager's reports. Brian Wheat. Um, yeah, just a couple items I um, sent out to you guys a couple weeks ago, but the Census Bureau did release their 2020 census numbers. Um, for the city of Spencer, that was some positive news, a gain of 92 residents over the last census. So our official population is now 11,325. Um, looking into it, it appears that more detailed information is going to be released um, in the coming weeks. Kind of the, the I had read is towards the end of September, they'll start releasing some of that census block data and demographic information stuff. So. Um, and then they'll continue to release some of that stuff throughout the fall um, as those numbers are finalized, et cetera. So, but at least for um, the city, um, our, we saw a positive. The overall county, I think, was down 1.7% in population. So um, <clears throat> kind of I think the information sent out, if you see the most of the state, um, a lot of the rural areas, we're seeing some declines throughout the state. So. Um, in that but so that and that biggest impact that it, that has on us is our in our road use tax so um, the money we receive for streets and road use tax funds is all based on population is our biggest component to that it also does affect us on some grants that we may apply for the the future but um, the biggest direct impact is obviously on road use tax receipts <clears throat> last week our auditors were on site um, working on our fiscal year 21 audit. Um, they spent about three days here on site. Um, they'll be back at their, their offices and we'll be supplying some you know, questions and follow-up materials, but um, that will probably proceed and we should hear something. Usually they tie it up um, early December just because they wait on a couple more reports that we file here late fall. Um, in that before they can finalize some of their stuff. But that happened. Um, today, staff and or met or had a webinar, I guess, with the DNR and FEMA officials, kind of discussing the floodplain map and its impacts or proposed impacts to mainly the green industrial area. And so um, in that Muddy Creek discharge area. And so we were worried or concerned of how that's going to impact that whole park and its future development. Um, we've planning has given um, FEMA and the DNR some potential options to um, model that if we either raised up or if we widened the ditch or, you know, a half dozen different scenarios, how would that change the land within that park? So it sounded like they were giving their consultants the green light and maybe by no later than early November, I think it was, we should hear back from the results of those things. So um, had pretty good attendance um, from both city and SMU representation there on the concerns of what these new floodplain maps will do to that area. So um, stay tuned, I guess, as we get more information. <clears throat> and then the last thing as we've discussed or the last couple is the aquatic center and the issues we had 
um, there with the last water bill, et cetera. Jared and Midwestern Mechanical have been out scoping the pool and looking at it. And, you know, at this point we have no update. We can't find any real, or we can't find any indication of leaks um, throughout any of the supply lines, return lines, any of that at the pool. So we're still looking at um, what it was causing that huge water usage through the month of June, or late June, early July. Um, it occurred, it rolled over into some of this current bill that we just received. SMU sent us the last 40 days worth of data because um, the meter we have stores 40 days worth of data and we're trying to make heads and tails of it, but as we've looked at it so far, there's nothing to indicate what's causing the large usage. So we're continuing to have those discussions and looking at it, but at this point we still have no clue of what caused that bill. So anything, any other questions you might have? Is there any chance that, um, that there could have been a faucet <laughs> left open somewhere? Or a valve? <laughs> <laughs> Not for five million gallons. I didn't mean, I, yeah, I, meant, I meant a valve. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, and Donovan can maybe get a little bit better on the numbers, but as we've tried looking at it, it's a two-inch meter going in, and the amount of water that it does would have been pushing that meter to its kind of its limit and flowage through a two-inch line almost for 24 hours a day to even get to the two, you know, the five million gallons. And then um, what they gave us here, out of the last billing cycle covers all but I think around five days and so we have 25 days of the last billing which everything is normal and the re response we're hearing now is well it occurred in the 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 first five days of the billing cycle we used approximately was it 2.2 million gallons or something and then what we have data for is appears to be back to normal and we don't have any major changes in operation there through this time period. So we're, we're still investigating. We're just hitting roadblocks as to what. Have, have they tested the meter or checked on, you know, to see if the meter is defective or anything? It's digital now, right? It's all digital. It's a digital right? meter. It was brand new this season. Um, they have not taken it to test it, um, but. So. If, we're, we're still investigating, but we're, we're hitting roadblocks as to, like I said, what we think or what it could be. So that was the first month then that the, uh, the new meter was used? The it was brand new this season, yeah. Any other questions for Brian? Any other items, Brian? No. Right no. now, that's it. All right. Item 10, Mayor's Report, uh, just a few items. You'll see uh, a motion to appoint Compensation Advisory Board Ward 1. I've asked a couple people. They have declined, so we need to... Um, Don, do we need a motion to table, or can we just not address that particular one? We don't have a name tonight. Uh, that's up to you, so we don't need a motion. Okay, thank you. Trail usage and street usage, just a reminder to the citizens, uh, this time of year it gets dark. Uh, early and it uh, the sun takes a little time coming up in the morning and then we're gonna have daylight savings time come so just encourage everyone who's out using the pedestrian walkways and bikeways to wear lights if at all possible it really helps prevent an accident and also in the crossing areas especially on Grand and South Grand please use the lights that are up there's a couple more around town around schools and over on 18th Street and with the fare traffic as well just be patient morning uh, evening and then during the day so some of our commute times tend to get a little longer during the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> uh, the Par Department of Transportation just wanted a quick follow-up on the Menards and uh, Walmart intersections. There's been a little delay in getting those studies done. Mark's done a good job, Mark White contacting the DOT just to see where we were at because this was the time window we thought we would um, have some answers back and the work is a little more comprehensive than they had initially anticipated and so based on the data capture and the algorithms they need to complete the study. Um, they're still doing it. It's just going to take a, a little bit longer than we had initially thought. So I uh, have had some questions on that. Just wanted to update everyone on that. Uh, spent some time in the last couple of weeks on economic development with uh, Shannon at the corridor and just general discussions with SEDC members and Brian making sure that no leads get dropped uh, in the interim before we get a city manager. 
Reminder to everyone running uh, interested in public office, no matter what the office is, whether it's council, hospital board, uh, your papers are due in September 16th. Is that correct, correct Teresa? Uh, to City Hall. So no matter where you took papers out, whether you got them at the courthouse or downloaded them online, they're due back here at City Hall. If it's a city uh, position you're running for, make sure the signatures match. Teresa will then take it over to the county auditor's office. They will verify the signatures, and then you will be eligible to be on the ballot. And you'll contact those people back. Is that correct, Teresa? They actually sign their affidavit when they bring the papers in, so they, they are a candidate then. Okay, thank you. Finance committee meeting, uh, Bill's gone, but uh, between last meeting and this meeting, we talked about some capital improvement process plan, you know, changes potentially coming up uh, this year just to have a little more comprehensive look. Brian's digging into that. And uh, the agenda item that you saw here talking about the reimbursement for the sidewalk cafes as well. Brian talked about the census. I did uh, cover it on my mayor's press conference last week as well. The most common question I'm sure we all get asked is growth. And when you look at the census, uh, if you look at each census over the last, say, 25 to 30 years uh, in rural Iowa and especially northwest Iowa, uh, the trend uh, is a lot more red, which means decline, than blue, which means growth. Uh, we attended a great session a couple of years ago from uh, Iowa State, sent a professor, well not a professor, but a researcher over and talked about uh, about 15 years ago the average distance to travel for essential services in northwest Iowa was about 11 to 15 miles, so that includes groceries, insurance, buy a car, kind of your core school, your core mm -hmm. services, and uh, as of two years ago that had extended out to about 32 miles. And so we see that, right? We see that with school districts consolidating, um, changing how they do business. We see the, the smaller towns around us. And so uh, what the census to me reveals is that we're still a very critical regional hub. So we had local population growth, as Brian touched on, which was just under 100 people. But we also see regionally our workforce. Uh, we have a little over 4,000, almost 5,000 people commute in. I believe the number was between 12 and 1,500 commute out. So just on workforce alone, we swell our population about 3,500 people, plus all the people coming in uh, from the outside during the day to conduct commerce, get their health care taken care of, all of these things. And so it's, it's critically important that uh, while the census matters and it shows us some kind of local trends, uh, our community lives larger than just the population base that's here. So uh, what we need to do, obviously, is continue to put up um, affordable housing, all different types of housing, which we have on our plans, but also remember our regional presence. So to the north, uh, Dickinson County had a net gain, but they also had communities in the Lakes chain that actually lost population. BV County had a net gain and some towns had a net gain there. A lot of that's due to workforce, the halo effect of the um, large employers that they have in that area. And so hopefully the takeaway, I know I saw some comments where people were disappointed, you know, what, you know, what a great win, 92 people in 10 years. <laughs> um, we can look at it that way, or we can also look at the, the realization of what the trend lines around us show and how we performed. So if you look at just tonight's council agenda, now, not everything's roses. We have challenges, but we approved tonight two projects of commercial growth where there's literal dirt moving. These are expansions of big commercial businesses. We had a project downtown where there's going to be an upstairs renovation done uh, in partnership with Main Street, Iowa. If we didn't pay to participate in Main Street, Iowa, that business owner wouldn't be able to participate in the challenge grant program. And so it's all connected together. So while the census is essentially just a spreadsheet, uh, the results are a lot more than just a spreadsheet. And I just wanted to, to remind everybody of that. I did have a request from the census about, um, it's a question I've asked, how did we gain 92 people, but in the last 10 years, I've seen a lot more houses go up than that. So right now, uh, Alec is working on uh, pulling some building permits, doing a little bit of analysis uh, about what's occurred in the last 10 years from a construction standpoint related to residency. So not just number of permits, but what's behind the permit. So if it's an apartment building, how many units are there? If it's duplexes, how many duplexes came online? If it's single family, how many of those came online? And then we'll correlate that together and get that information back out to you. But I, I just wanted the public to know that um, the census report isn't something that we just take in and forget. We constantly utilize it and are looking at the numbers and we'll try to uh, fishbone that out for you a little more. 
I did contact our city manager candidates. I had not contacted them out of respect of the interview process, uh, but because of the long delays, I just wanted to reach out as the mayor and let them know that um, we appreciate their patience. We appreciate them hanging in there. And I uh, was able to have a, a nice discussion with each of them. And I'd just like to relay that they're all still very excited, you know, to be in the process. And it's a little longer than we want, but uh, we'll, we'll have a good outcome at the end. Final two items I have for you uh, this morning, we had an assessor's board meeting. And for those of you who don't know, the assessor's board is made up of representatives from each taxing entity that you have on your property tax bill. So there's the supervisors, they constitute collectively one vote. The school board uh, elected officials in every school district in the county compromise one vote. And the mayors uh, representing the cities of the county compromise one vote collectively. So there's three votes. So uh, today's meeting, uh, uh, just wanted to relay to you. So there was a split vote on the hiring of the new appraiser. Um, the, the mayors declined to uh, move forward with a yes vote. We voted no. The school board members voted yes. And the supervisors voted yes, which I think is fine. Um, it's government in action. And our concerns, uh, just to relay to you, um, my concern is your representative related to your property tax valuation, um, as mayors, we had a concern about the experience coming in day one of the uh, uh, recommended candidate. Uh, I'm sure they'll do a great job, uh, but just wanted you to know that there are things that happen outside of our council meeting that you are represented at, and uh, if you have any questions on any of those items, uh, please contact me anytime. I've had some emails about mandates, and so I just want to clearly and publicly state uh, my stance on that. So the uh, emails and other elected officials have received these as well. So uh, our form of government, and we've talked about this before, I just want to review it very quickly. The mayor in our council does not have a vote, okay? I, I don't vote on anything. <laughs> uh, so um, feel free to contact me for, for anything. I'll walk you through whatever you have questions about, but I cannot represent you on a vote. Every citizen in Spencer has what I like to say three votes. So you all live in a ward, so your ward council person is a vote. You have two at-large representatives that each have a vote directly representing you. So there's, there's three votes that you have of the seven up here. So the, the question that was posed to me was, you know, where do you stand on vaccine mandates and mass mandates and essentially I'll be watching you and, you know, I'm paying attention to how you vote. I don't have a vote, but here's my stance. Uh, as I've stated before, last year, um, I, I will not declare at this point in time a state of public emergency, which would give me the superpowers to be able to issue mandates. That's the only way it happens, okay? You can't just issue mandates, you have to go through a process. Um, I declined to do that last year and I can't foresee that I would do that this year. And, and the reason is, um, it's not that I don't personally either support or not support masking or support or don't support vaccines. As I have said before, it's a healthcare decision. So uh, we were very active in relaying information to you last year during COVID that was primarily due to the governor's orders and how it was impacting business openings, business closures, travel restrictions, you know, things that were of a, a uh, governance issue. When it comes to healthcare decisions, those are your decisions. Um, it's not the city's government's business to get into your health care business. Um, that's why the County Board of Health in our county weighed in on the mask mandate last year, not your city council. And so I just want to make clear, again, contact me with any questions you have, but um, uh, I have no intention of issuing any mandates related to anything health care. I don't care if it's COVID. I don't care if it's a runny nose. I don't care if it's a sprained ankle. That's, that's the business between you and your health care provider. So uh, again, email me, call me. I have my phone calls here at my extension forwarded out to my cell phone. I try to answer them if I can during the day. Contact me anytime um, and you will get a response. So uh, I just wanted to, to state that and address that uh, very publicly. So with that, I would entertain any questions anybody would have. I George? Ask, uh, I received the same email as you did from both parties. Did anyone else in the council? You did. Yeah. So others received so yeah. all the whole council wants to receive it. Okay, I was just interested in that and want, wanted to know. So we all received it. Uh, I've got my own take on the, the masking. Um, and, and the other things, the, the distancing and that sort of thing. You know, the CDC came out early 
uh, and said we didn't need masks. And that clouded that mask issue the whole time. And then they finally admitted later, well, we, the reason we said that is because we wanted the medical people to be able to have the mask because there was a shortage of masks. Well, my take on it was why didn't they tell us that? We're all edu we're, we're adults, and we would have accepted that. That's pretty important that the medical people get them. But they didn't tell us that. They just told us the masks weren't important. Then they come out and try to change it, and then they wonder why the people don't want to wear masks later. Now they also ask us to do all this to slow down the rate of, of what the infection was because the hospitals were getting overloaded. That made sense to me, and I think it did most people. We needed to slow that down so the hospital. Now that's not the case. We're now at the point that we're over half of us are inoculated uh, or have had the, the COVID-19. And my theory is why, if the people don't want to get vaccinated now, let them, let them get inoculated, let them get exposed. And I can remember when I was a kid, the folks would take their kids over to the neighbors that had measles so they'd get... Uh, to get the measles and get over. Well, the quicker we get people over this thing, the quicker we're not we're going to have these other. Now, I just heard today there's a new uh, virus that's kicked in now. Another, another um, variant. Yeah. Yep. And yep. another variant. And the, the longer we curtail this thing from getting people either exposed or getting them vaccinated, the more variants we're going to have. As soon as we get it shut down, the variants will quit because there won't be anything for them to work on. And that's my theory right now. I think we should uh, not have to wear a mask or we shouldn't have to do all the other things they were talking about. All right. Thank you, George. Any other questions or comments? All right. Just super quick recap. If you're going to take health care advice, take it from your doctor, not your mayor. All right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. No, no comment. Mayor. All right. Council and committee reports, Brian. Just one quick addition to yours on the papers. We had some questions last week on when here. Um, so the signatures you need if you're going to run for a ward position, those residents that sign your petition must live in that ward. Um, if you're running or taking out papers for mayor or um, at large, they must live within the city limits. Not so, the zip code. Not the, zi not the zip code. So we had two questions of that posed last week and called. So just to put that clarification out there that they must live within the city limits, not the zip code if you're running for mayor or at large. And if you're running for an at or a ward position, they must live in your ward. Ward maps are available here or, mm -hmm. you know, the city clerk's office can help identify where the ward boundaries are. So And on the website, right? Yes, we do have the ward, ward map on our website as well. And then one small. more comment on that before we leave it. Um, the hospital board, they have to live within the service area of the hospital. So that's just one more caveat on the election. Right. Thank you, Teresa. Any other, uh, see, Brian, did you cover the upcoming meetings? Nope, I, I'll get to that. The only thing we have scheduled right now is the regular city council meeting on September 20th. All right. Thank you. Item 12, I would entertain a motion to approve the bills and claims. First by Tom, second by George. Discussion or questions on those? All right, hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, other business opportunity to address the council. Would anyone like the podium? Going once, going twice. No dice, all right. Okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. First by Donovan, second by Tracy. <laughs> it's like a tandem here. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, anyone wants to stay? Meeting adjourned. Have a great evening. Hey, Brian. My screen kept blanking out. Oh, mine too. Yeah. Mine horrible. Horrible. Is it horrible. It's horrible. You'd go back and then it would go all the way to the yeah. beginning again. Yeah, I did. Okay. So what are so, your concerns, Brian?